Hi all. Today I will discuss about uh, asynchronous methods in EJB3. As part of EJB 3.1 spec uh, specification, uh, we have uh, we have features like asynchronous method invocation. So we can write uh, a method. We can uh, we can write a method in any uh, stateless EJB bin, uh, and we can make that uh, method asynchronous. Uh, so to do that, uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, we just have to annotate the method with uh, a annotation called uh, asynchronous. This part of EJB 3.1. So any container which is compliant to EJB 3.1, uh, uh, we can deploy and run, uh, run this uh, kind of method. And the, the annotation asynchronous uh, can be applicable on a method level or a class level. So when we give it to a class level, that is when we annotate uh, a stateless session bin or stateful session bin. Uh, with uh, asynchronous, most of the methods will be directly or uh, automatically will be invoked as asynchronous. But if we want to have a uh, mixing kind of methods, like some methods are synchronous and some methods are asynchronous, then we'll apply the asynchronous annotations to the method level. So in my demo, in the demo where I'll showcase this, in my demo, I I'll have a session bin, strictly session bin. Um, and I will have a mixed number of methods. Uh, few methods are synchronous and few methods are asynchronous. Uh, so I'll just go through that class and what I have written and how I'll focus them. So I have used NetBeans ID, uh, WebLogic 12C, which is a EJB 3.1 compliant server. Then uh, Servlet is a client uh, which will invoke the uh, stateless session bin and my uh, stateless, stateless local bin. Uh, which has some asynchronous methods. So we'll get started. I have created a uh, EJB, stateless EJB named as service bin. Then I have written few methods, dummy methods, which has some uh, dummy uh, uh, um, block of code which will take some time to execute it. So I'll just walk you through uh, the code. Uh, so I have few methods here, send email asynchronous, uh, which is a asynchronous method to do a uh, to convert a method to asynchronous, we just have to annotate uh, that method with asynchronous annotation. So if you go through that, so it's part of Java X dot EJB. So uh, if you expand your uh, uh, EJB container jar, then you will uh, get, get this uh, custom annotation. As I told you, uh, the target is method and type. So we can uh, place these annotations in the class level or in the method level. So coming back to the code, so I have a method called send email async, which is asynchronous. Similarly, I have a method called send email, which is synchronous. And I have another method, uh, which, which is execute computation asynchronous and execute computation, which is synchronous. Now the interesting part here, my second asynchronous method is, uh, first asynchronous method, the written type is void. I'm not returning anything from my method. Okay, so it's a synchronous method. The best example is when I am sending some messages to a messaging server or sending a mail. So I don't need, probably I don't need a uh, response. In that time, I, I can have this kind of methods in a uh, method declaration. So, but the next method is, uh, it, it returns something. So the asynchronous method returns some it, it does some operation and return me some object. So how do we access that and uh, what is the things I have to do? So in that case, when we need a response, uh, so the return type should be future, future of any object type. Future is present in Java, in the Java concurrent package. So you see. Uh, so it's there in the concurrent pack, pack, package. So the written type should be a uh, future object, and the type you have to specify what kind of object the future uh, future class will hold. Uh, so while accessing this client, uh, while um, executing this method in my uh, servlet, I'll show you how to access it and how to get the future object there. So for the timing, I'll just work you through what I'm doing here. Uh, so just the first two methods will compare. 
I have send email async and send email. So I am uh, simply I am doing a thread or flip uh, so that uh, the method execution will take some time. Similarly, uh, send email the same uh, four seconds. I am uh, doing a thread flip of four seconds so that we can see the difference. Like uh, the execution of time is uh, we can we can record the execution time. Uh, even if I am uh, have put the logger for start and stop, start and end. So that we can notice, uh, we can uh, see when my method is being uh, started, execution is started, and when it ends. Just to keep a uh, log in it, I have put logs in everywhere. Similarly, to uh, for this execution computation, I have put the logs, and again I am making a thread or sweep. And uh, for this execution computation also, I have used a thread or sweep. Uh, now coming back to the execution part, how async products method is being invoked or executed by the EJP container. The simplest logic is whenever we annotate a uh, method with ASM runners, then the container, what it does, uh, like uh, then the, the caller party, the whatever object is being, uh, whoever is invoking this method, the particular object will not wait up to the completion of the uh, execution of completion, um, completion of execution of the method. So, example, I am calling this method. So, until unless this in the normal scenario when synchronous way, until unless this method is not executed completely, my control flow will not proceed. So, example, I will show you my servlet which is a client. Say, I uh, through this. Uh, this is the bin I, am, I have used, and when I call, when I am calling this method send email async. So in normal syn uh, synchronous way, in what what will happen is this method will be called until unless the method is not executed completely, the control flow will not come to this place. Or else in asynchronous way, first the container will execute this, then since it's asynchronous, it, it immediately come to the next step. The control flow comes here. Again, it's a uh, uh, asynchronous method. Then it, the control flow will come to here. So, so this is the client I have written. So this is the basic concept of synchronous and asynchronous in uh, EJBs. Uh, so to to verify that demo, I have a, I have written a servlet. I have written is a verify verifier servlet, and uh, through EJB annotations, I have injected the EJB service bin. Now. To have a differentiation, um, I have two URL patterns. One is for async, one is for sync. So in in the sync URL pattern, I will call the normal uh, uh, synchronous methods of the EJB. So so here I have the method for process sync invocation. Uh, so here I have all the synchronous methods are being invoked. So service bin dot send email. Then the result. So if you come here, you can come to this is a, this is a uh, synchronous method. Now, similarly for async result, uh, this is what process async invocation. Now we'll run that circuit and we'll see how it works. We'll just watch the log and we'll notice the difference. So, get back to the browser here. So, as you can see, just keep uh, we'll just see a, uh, see this logger view. Now I hit enter. So I'm just executing my servlet. So you can see start of send email now, then end of uh, send email. Then start of execution competition and the end of execution uh, execute competition. That means uh, it has waited up to the completion of uh, this method execution. Then we started the execution of the second method. Then it ends. Then after we got the response. When we came to when we uh, invoke the ASM ASM service, uh, let's see the log again, which will give us a better view. Now we'll go back here and just access the asynchronous services. Now let's see the start of send email then immediately it went to start of execute computation async. So that means it doesn't wait uh, for this the completion of this method execution. Then uh, the end of execution completion task then end of send email and finally we got our response. So that means we are not 
like our control flow will not be blocked by a uh, longer uh, by a method which takes long time to execute so for that reason the tcn uh, it, it gives a, a better result than your synchronous services uh, in my synchronous class when I, where i have written type i have told you we have this future object uh, so how do we use them in how do we get the object in my client class so i have this verify circuit now you clearly see uh, the written type is future integer so it will give me a future object how do i get so this integer type i'll get by uh, there is a method in in the future object called get so it will give me the corresponding object whatever being passed to the future object so i i'll get the integer here as you, as you can see i am returning a async result this is uh, in in ejb packet so this is nothing but class so here what i'm doing i'm just returning a number 100 with the of type of async result so through get method of that get method of the future object i'll get the result and i'm just printing it so uh, if you want to see again this i will look on the log here the moment i hit here so start of send email start of send email start of execute competition async end of execute competition async then end of send email now again if you come back to the synchronous way one by one it print start of send email it will wait for 4 seconds to execute then end of send email start of execution competition and end of execution execute competition so one by one it executes so in this case i just uh, uh, showcase you uh, how do we write an asynchronous cjb method and how do we access them uh, i have also written a blog on that so this is asynchronous uh, method in cjb it will be published shortly and even if the whole code is taken to uh, google codes the code project is uh, code.google.com/t slash abani hyphen office hyphen projects so you can download the whole working code over over your any of any of your places uh, 